Hello, I want you to have a look at this structure here, this one. Is it, or this one, or that one, is it two spheres, or is it, what is it? I'm forwarding the simulation here, and now you see even more blobby structures here. Here we have three now. Arnold is sort of rendering in real time, it tries to. So we have an interesting object right here. They're all blobby, interacting, like melting together. Let's have a look from the top. As you can see, it looks totally different in the ordinary viewport look. Let's render it from here. That's called blobby surface. Uh, what I'll do now is I create, like always, a new scene. And in the new scene we need two objects which emit particles, for example, this object here, a disk and a plane and I rotate the plane the other way around so they sort of the surface normals face each other so we have two objects now uh, what we'll do is we select both of them we go to FX the special effects and particles and we emit from object what this command will do is it will create particle systems for both surfaces with two emitters because the surfaces as such are the emitters and one particle object so we'll have only one color of particles available if you want to have two different colors you need to emit from that one and then do the same thing here but we'll make it short here and um, this is basically what we have certainly not what we want they all fall down and we need to change this. Here is the particle uh, which we're dealing with, both basically uh, emitters in one particle shape. And um, down here we have the dynamic proper properties in the end particle shape tab here, dynamic properties, and um, we ignore the solver gravity. That means we don't want to have gravity. We want to have dynamic simulation but not gravity. What else we want to have is this. We don't want them to emit in all directions. And that's, again, and I'm sorry for that, actually it's not my fault really, you have to jump to the emitter now. And right here you have an emitter type, and the emitter type can be surface. So we've changed one of them to surface, the left one, the disk. And now we do the same thing right here. Actually, we need to go to the emitter, which is under that plane here, and we'll change this to surface. We can reduce the particle emissions um, scale here, uh, instead of 100 per second, only 10 per second, and we'll raise the speed. It's currently set to 1, let's set it to 3, so they will shoot from the right to the left quite fast. Now uh, we want to get to the blobbiness, and the blobbiness is um, right here. It's a particle thing. Currently the particles are white dots. They can be rendered in Arnold, just all right, but uh, we want them to look like blobby surfaces, like the, what you saw at the beginning of this tutorial. It's under shading, and you need to change the points to blobby surface and you have s slash w here in brackets that means software I think it's an old way to uh, abbreviate that but uh, the blobby surface was only available for the Maya renderer in the past and not in the viewport but Arnold renders the blobby surface just fine so this is these are the blobs here we'll um, go back to the emitter on the left side 
increase the speed quite drastically and the amount of particles we can reduce them to like 20 and now when we go all the way up here in the particle section sorry if that's going a little bit fast uh, I always jump from the particles to the emitters here I have emitted one emitted two and particle shape and uh, I just want to make them bigger all the way up here is particle size and uh, I pump up the particle size to say 0 0.4 so let's rerun this we'll introduce a light and we go for a an area light which sits right here and we'll move it right here make it much bigger go to normalize and uncheck that because it you can see the thumbnail here when I check it it gets darker this has to do with the whole lighting environment since it's our, our only light sources it's just fine and um, we need to raise the exposure a little bit uh, to maybe from zero to one zero doesn't mean it doesn't have an effect but the effect is very small because the intensity is one by default exposure is kind of the lighting balance on the whole scene okay and now um, actually a little bit larger particles would be advisable 0 0.6 like this so we rerun the simulation like this and now we get a little bit closer and we could render it with Arnold now here that's a typical way but we can also go to renderer and check Arnold here and this little pop-up window here asks us what you want to render beauty or whatever um, currently there's nothing else available like no alpha transparency or whatever and you click on the arrow you already see the blobbiness now now I go right mouse click material attributes and here I see the default blin of those blobby particles that's a Maya blin let's go to the Arnold surface shader which is here so the particles turn white and now you see the effect I was talking about at the beginning Let's go back to the beginning of the simulation and hide the two objects, the two emitter objects, H. And let's see how the particles start. You see they are blobby enough to uh, interact with each other. And when we move one, two, three, four, a couple of steps further and have a closer look now how they interact, you see now they have contact and now they melt together and you have a melting process right here that is frame number 50 let's rerun the simulation go to frame 49 50 51 let's go back a little bit here you have this interesting structure of blobby objects with quite a nice lighting situation because we have that light shining from the front so we have the extreme shadows right here when we look at the whole scene from the top and I think Arnold does a quite a good job rendering this in sort of real time at least in the viewport real time is not possible when rendering with a CPU we have to wait for Arnold rendering with the graphics cards finally right mouse click material attributes go to one of the presets and for example gold well these are the blobby surfaces quite powerful and not very predictable like all dynamic simulations bye bye